next guest is local author Mark Gordon-Smith, who has written many books about Italy. He also has a more recent book called Harrisville, as well as two new books in the making. Mark is also the president and owner of a company called Private Italy Tours. Mark discusses how his voyage began as an author. I was born at Fort Eustis, Virginia. Uh, my father was a, became a career military officer. We lived all over the United States, like most military families do, and also in Europe, one tour. But I was born in Virginia, and then we lived all over the place. When I was growing up, we lived, uh, after we left Virginia, um, we moved to Carlisle Barracks, Pennsylvania, and from there my dad got orders to go to uh, Italy, to Livorno, which is a big port city on the western coast of the peninsula. And so my first, second, and third grade years, that's where we lived. And there's no doubt that that became an impressionable time, both in terms of my growing up and my exposure to language and travel, but also to writing. It was uh, very influential. And from there, we came back to Washington, D.C., to Walter Reed Medical Center. And then we went to Salt Lake, to Hawaii, and back to Colorado. And that's where I graduated high school. Mark talks about how he got involved with writing and what inspired him to write about Italy. I was very inspired and sort of scratched, if you will, and itched by Frances Mays' story of Under the Tuscan Sun and her introduction to the way of life that I remembered living even as a child years ago in Italy. It evoked a lot of memories and I had left a corporate job in HR, I'd been in human resources for many years with MCI. and went into consulting and the last few jobs that I had in consulting were simply laying people off. I became sort of the George Clooney of, of a very small world. And I decided I would take some money, take the risk and move to Italy. So I lived in Florence for 18 weeks in 2001 and essentially wrote the first book. But it was Francis Mays' book and the interest that generated that really inspired me to, to try this, to, to take the leap of faith, if you will. I've read Italian history most of my life, um, Francis's books. I'm trying to think of some of the other books that sort of got me interested in, in doing the format that I ended up with. I would just, I guess, have to say that it began as sort of a journal, and then that moved into what has been a little bit difficult to define. Is it a travel memoir? Is it travel essay? Uh, is it a journal? But each piece that I wrote became kind of a meditation, if you will, on the place, the time, the smells, the air, uh, the taste of the food, so that it became more of a sensual experience to try to share that same experience with the reader. And the challenge became, as I did sit in these places and write, how do you place the reader in a place a lot of them have never been? Mark speaks about how much time and effort really goes into the marketing of a book. He also talks about his journey to Italy to write his first book, Tuscan Echoes. The, the toughest part of this process, I, I thought at the time, was writing the book. Um, once the outline was done and I began to write in earnest, I brought it back to the States, to North Carolina, met a couple of editors at a publishing company that used to be in Wilmington. They're no longer in business. My original vision for this book had been sort of a coffee table book with photography and vignettes and memoirs of, of days in, in Florence and Italy. Their encouragement was let the writing describe the place, don't put photos in. Once the book was completed and it was through edit, that's when the real work began because marketing is 90% of the labor. Uh, you can write a book and have it published, but trying to get it out into the public domain is really a challenge. The structure of the days in Italy, though, maybe more specific to your question, was going out in the mornings and just exploring the city. I went to Assisi for three days, went to Venice for three or four days, and in the course of each day would take a writing journal and just sit down in cafes or go into churches or just experience the city and try to capture the feeling, the moments that I spent while I was there. That was a lot of fun, of course, because you're in Italy anyway. but. The real work began once the book was done. That's when the real work started. The Italy books have sold really well. I've been encouraged about that. Tuscan Echoes is more about the culture of Italy. Tuscan Light touches much more on the food, the wine, 
the the family structure of Italy, which I think in one way defines the culture, but it's not as generic. And that book has done very well uh, recently. Harrisville was very different. It takes place in my mom's hometown in Michigan, uh, not even touches Italy, uh, but it sold pretty well as well. But of the three books, Tuscan Light. Mark gives us an insight on his most recent book, Harrisville. When my father was in Korea, uh, this was back, of course, in the mid, early mid-50s, uh, we moved back to my mom's hometown to be close to her family in case something happened to my dad, to be close to my, my grandmother and grandfather. My mom's parents, my, my grandfather was a circuit court judge in Alcona County, Michigan. At the time we lived there, the old courthouse burned down, and my grandfather's office was in that building. And while I was very small, very young, there's something about that experience I still remember. So the one true event in Harrisville was a fire at the county courthouse. But I shift time to take it out of context, back to world, the time of World War I. And it's essentially a romance mystery about uh, a young woman who comes in out of the logging camps, her mother cooks, which is what my grandmother's, my great-grandmother did, uh, and the introduction of this girl into the school in Harrisville, and the two men that essentially grow up fighting for her affection, and what happens as a result of that. And I'll tell, I'll tell you, because I tell people this all the time, there's no sex in, in the book. But I, the people who have read it have enjoyed it, but that's the key event. And it's a romance mystery that takes place in this town. Mark talks about what he expects from the future and what advice he would give to aspiring authors. Well, my future right now is continuing to, to run Private Italy, which is this, this company that essentially came to be as a result of the first book's release. Some people really asked, why don't I show people the places that I've written about in Italy? This will be, next year will be our eighth year, and that's really what pays the bills. If I was ever, ever able to get agented by a, what they call legitimate publisher, uh, that would be where my, my journey, I hope, will go, and that would be to become a full-time writer. That's tough to do, especially at my age and stage and entry into the writing market, but you never know. I would just say that uh, th th the technology that I've seen grow as I've aged, I'm not all that old, but as I've aged, um, has driven a lot of communication away from writing. Uh, texting and abbreviations and a lot of the briefer means of communication seem to have eroded a lot of people's ability or interest in sitting down to write. And I really believe this. Everybody I walk by on the street, every car I pass by when I'm driving, there's a story there. And in a lot of cases that wants to be told, and in some cases needs to be told, but they're afraid to do it. My advice is write the book. Find somebody, find a support group like Writer's Block, which is a group of authors here locally, and write your story. Because the public is hungry for it, I don't think that the market for reading will do anything but increase, be it ebook, uh, the Kindle, all of these new technologies that are developing. But it's a wonderful journey to write the book, and I would just encourage people to do that. Write it down. If you are interested in any of Mark's books, you can find them at your local bookstore or go onto Amazon.com to purchase them.